Greetings, brethren, throughout the video, and welcome to our continued study on Zechariah chapter 4, Revisiting the Golden Bowl, part 2. By way of review, in part 1 of this presentation, which I encourage that you would review if you haven't seen it yet, we demonstrated how in this 1944 original Shepherd's Rod study chart, showing the golden bowl, or the vision from Zechariah 4, that there were only six tubes taking oil out of the bowl, as highlighted there under the red arrow. Not only in the Shepherd's Rod charts, but in artwork showing the golden bowl throughout the Shepherd's Rod message. Very consistent throughout. However, we have shown that after the death of Brother Haddaf, that man has taken it upon himself to alter the Shepherd's Rod or remodel them, and has added an extra tube, showing seven tubes taking the oil out. And this work started with Salem Association, continued on through Yukaipa and Mountdale, the Waco Association, and then a group that has broken away from Waco. And in each one of these charts, an added tube is added into this picture. So that was proven in part one all the evidence. So now in part two, we want to move forward and seek to harmonize with scripture. So we will review in detail here and ask the question once again, how many tubes are going into the bowl? Well, this must harmonize first with scripture. And this is in Zechariah chapter four, verse two, it reads, and I have looked and behold a candlestick, all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. So we have this golden bowl on top of the candlestick, and the candlestick has seven lamps. And here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven candlesticks, and on top of the lamps are seven pipes. No question about it. This is irrefutable. The scripture says it, and the image confirms it. However, if we look up on top of the bowl and count the number of pipes that are actually entering in and taking oil out, we get, counting left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Only six pipes are seen taking oil out of the golden bowl. So this brings up the question, how do we harmonize this? And furthermore, what brought about the changes? So as we move forward, let us address the following question. Why did Brother Haddaf show only six tubes taking oil from the golden bowl in four different separate graphic images throughout the shepherd's rod message? How can we harmonize what the original shepherd's rod artwork shows and what the Bible says? Furthermore, is it a safe and sane procedure to justify this man-made addition to inspired artwork after Brother Haddaf died? We need to look at these things carefully. So in order to seek harmonization with inspiration, we need to consider how many candlesticks are in the Bible, and specifically the tenth candlestick, all of gold. In Shepherd's Rod, Volume 2, page 284, paragraph 2, it tells us, Thus we have a candlestick for each of the two sections of God's church while the scriptures were being written. One candlestick and one olive tree to the Jewish, and one candlestick and one olive tree for the apostles, and seven for the remaining history of the church to the time of the separation of the tares from the wheat, or to the commencement of the harvest. Thus the candlestick, church, in Zechariah's vision is the tent, denoting a universal church depicting the living church, that shall unite with all the saints since the world began, which will join with the church the entire universe of God. This candlestick, in Zechariah's vision, is a glorious one, in which comparison all others stand as nothing, in perfect harmony with the second temple, which in comparison the first stood as nothing. So we see here we have ten candlesticks. So let us summarize here on the next slide where these ten candlesticks of churches come from. We have the Old and New Testament churches, the Jewish and the Christian. 
And that's found in Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. The next seven churches in Revelation are found in Revelation chapters 1 to 3. The period of the wheat and tares commingled. And finally, the tenth church of all gold represents a purified church. No tares in the midst. The church after the harvest commences. And this is in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 2. Let's do the math here to confirm. We have 2 plus 7 plus 1 equals 10. So mathematically perfect. There are the 10 candlesticks. And this is the key how to harmonize the vision and what Brother Hadoff showed in his chart images. So the seven churches in Revelation 1 to 3, of course, we're familiar with this. Shows the history of the church in the New Testament era. And the last church, Laodicea, is the church where we exist today. The church of declaring a judgment hour message, the three angels' message. The church led by the angel of Laodicea, who's poor, miserable, blind, and naked. The church commingled with wheat and tares. That's where we are today. So we need to ask the question, when will the vision in Zechariah chapter 4, the tenth candlestick of pure gold or all gold, when will this be operative? Well, Shepherd's Rod, volume 2, page 286, paragraph 3, makes this clear. It reads, This golden candlestick is the most remarkable symbol in the Bible pertaining to the church of God. Its arrangement with complete number of lamps, bowl, tubes, and pipes, all of gold, with its two olive trees emptying themselves of the golden oil in the golden bowl, reveals that the last section of God's church is to be the most glorious church in all ages. This continued communication by the Holy Spirit to the church, represented by the olive branches emptying the golden oil out of themselves into the one golden bowl, and its complete set of supply tubes from the bowl to all its lamps is to bring every part of the entire body in perfect harmony, a church without guile. Well, brethren, this is quite clear. The only church without guile, the last section of God's church, the most glorious in all ages, will be that church that will arise after Ezekiel 9 when the 144,000 ministers go forth without guile in their mouths to preach the loud cry, to call God's people the great multitude out of the fallen churches of Babylon. So this is when we will see completeness. Seven pipes going in the golden bowl. But what about prior to that? The seven golden tubes come into play after Ezekiel 9. This is clear in Timely Greetings, Volume 1, Number 14, page 18, it reads, Here is seen that the whole symbolical setup is for the purpose of depicting the accomplishment of but one thing, of keeping the seven lamps, the entire church membership, supplied with spiritual oil, Bible truth, so that it might give spiritual light all round about, that the church might lighten the world with the revealed word of God. And since the ministry's duty is to feed the church with spiritual food, The fact is that the seven tubes represent the ministry at work, taking the oil, revealed truth, from the bowl to the seven lamps, the churches. This ministry is the ministry of the 144,000, where the entire church will be supplied with oil, Bible truth. This is not happening today with the present ministry. This will happen only after church purification. So now we have a basis to harmonize the rod artwork with all that's in inspiration. So how can we harmonize? We need to recognize two things. Number one, the vision in Zechariah 4 showing seven tubes bringing the oil to the church, the tenth, tenth candlestick, takes place after Ezekiel 9, a time when there will be complete unity and spiritual eyesight in the midst. Everyone will see eye to eye. The 144,000 will be endowed with the outpouring of the latter rain, the Holy Spirit, the second Pentecost, and go forth to proclaim the loud cry. This is yet future. It has not come yet. So we need to recognize at the present time, while the church is mingled with wheat and tares, the church of Laodicea, the seventh in Revelation chapters 1 to 3, or in terms of total number of candlesticks, the ninth, the one preceding the tenth in Zechariah 4, 
At this time, the ministry does not get all of their doctrines from the golden bowl and is most accurately depicted by showing six pipes drawing oil from the bowl, representing incompleteness or the efforts of men rather than that of God. Praise God, brethren. The brother Hadith is correct in showing only six pipes drawing oil from the bowl at this time. Praise God. Inspiration is always harmonious and consistent. So it brings us to another illustration, Church Militant versus Church Triumphant. Look at this great statement from the Spirit of Prophecy. It reads, The Lord desires us to be victorious over the powers of darkness. He is willing to save to the uttermost all who come to Him. It is through Him that we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand. Through Him we have access to heaven's storehouse, His Word, the Holy Scriptures. From this storehouse, we are to draw the weapons of our warfare, the weapons so effectively used by our Savior. With the sword of truth, it is written, He vanquished the foe. Armed with this sword and protected by the shield of faith, we, the church militant, shall be able to stand unmoved by Satan's assaults. Continuing to resist the enemy, we shall constantly gain strength and finally become the church triumphant, the tenth church the candlestick of pure gold in Zechariah's vision in chapter 4. But prior to that, we are church militant. And the only way, brethren, that we are going to be able to stand is to use, it is written, to go to the golden bowl and get our doctrine unaltered and contaminated by man's additions and subtractions. The pure, unadulterated, shepherd's rod message. No more. No less. That is our only hedge to safety against Satan's assaults. So it brings us to a point of decision. Each of us, where are we going to stand? Decide whom you're going to follow. Consider this solemn warning from Inspiration. Tract number 6, page 26. Inspiration is pleading with us, brother, sister, upon each of us squarely falls the momentous responsibility of deciding whether we will choose to follow the prophets of God in both the Old and New Testament periods, or to join God's adversaries who advocate uninspired interpretations of the scriptures, and who, along with all their sympathizers, will, if they continue in their evil course, become guilty with the Jews of the shed blood of the prophets. Brethren, this is a solemn warning. Do we want to uphold the hands of God's true last day prophets? Sister Ellen G. White and Brother Victor T. Haddiff and what they wrote in their original writings? Or do we want to join God's adversaries who advocate uninspired interpretations in addition to subtractions from inspiration, including the artwork? And if we sympathize with them, the blood of God's prophets will be on our hands. Fearful consideration. Ponder these things. Our soul salvation depends upon it. So we've clearly come to a crossroads here. Will we follow the straight and narrow track to God's holy kingdom? Or will we allow the many adversaries of truth that have arisen since the death of Brother Haddock, false teachers and false prophets, rising up on the left and on the right, seeking to divert us with their uninspired opinions and additions and subtractions to inspiration. We have many examples of this, and we will be revealing more in subsequent sections of this presentation. But now is the day of our salvation. Do we follow the rod and what Brother Haddock gives us, or do we follow the voice of man? And for those of you that would trivialize this or say, oh, it's not an important issue, making a mountain out of molehill, brother and sisters, do not sweep this under the rug. If Jesus himself said that anyone shall add or subtract one jot or tittle from the law, if Christ is that specific about his word, how much more everything that we've been given through inspiration, including the artwork, it is a soul salvation issue. Let us not be fooled by cunningly devised fables. 
and sweeped us under the rug. We must stand for the original shepherd's rod message which God give us without addition nor subtraction. Brethren, we need to come back to the Holy Bible and stand on the eternal rock of salvation, the Word of God. Jesus wept for our condition today with winds of doctrine everywhere. If you wonder why we have so much division in our ranks and all this winds of doctrine, the living those with, the antitypical King David, the Carmel Basin in Gilead, the storehouse location, on and on and on. It's because we do not get our doctrine from the bowl. We have allowed man to alter our message. We need to get back to the original, back to the golden bowl. And to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, unaltered by man. This closes our part two of our study on the golden bowl. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us anytime. We are upa7.org. Our email, upa5453 at gmail.com. Our telephone, 860-798-3672. Or better yet, visit us on our website, whyparish.org. Leave a comment on our blog spot. We will be putting these studies and posting them on this golden bowl. If you have a better way to harmonize, please let us know. We want to be saved as much as you. Please share. Let us reason together, brother, brothers and sisters, and not meddle with inspiration. May God bless your search for truth as for hidden treasure, and to cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils. Godspeed.